Hi, I understand you like to learn about Baghdad batteries. You're weird that way. I respect that. Fine with me. It's an ancient battery found around Baghdad, the current capital of Iraq and an ancient city in the old Persia when Parthians ruled, dated around 2000 years ago. According to Wikipedia, it's a set of three artifacts found together, a ceramic pot around 14 centimeters tall, a copper tube and an iron rod. It was told that it might have contained vinegar or grape juice. The stupid thing is that people just assumed this thing was a battery because it resembled a modern battery. TV and YouTube channels encouraged such false information for views, saying ancient people may have been powering lights or did electroplating. What? Is it so hard to teach facts that you have to promote pseudoscience? So what happens in a workshop? Everyone gets off. More ideas that may seem out there or... And why the f*** does she have a TV show promoting her make-believe mumbo-jumbo? I'm telling you people, if you really like to learn something, Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, an online learning community where skilled and experienced people share their actual knowledge in form of video lessons and projects. Join through the link in the description and get two months of free unlimited access and at your own convenience learn anything you want, after which it's less than $10 a month for thousands of classes to choose from. Back to the battery. Ancient people didn't have access to fancy technology. What? You think they could observe electricity? Yeah, I mean, sure, the obvious effects of electricity were always present since the beginning of time. But it's not like people could generate electricity on demand. Sure, sure, so for as long as there have been fabric or wool rubbing against body or whatever, which is like forever, people have been able to generate electricity. But how could they know what they're generating is the same thing they're seeing in the sky? Okay, okay, so they look very similar. But building a battery requires a whole other level of knowledge. Hey, would you like some lemon with your food? Ah! Fine, I guess building a battery doesn't require knowledge. All you need is to put two different conductors in an electrolyte, like lemon juice, vinegar, or salt water. People have been building it accidentally for ages. The clues about electricity were always there, and generating electricity was always so easy it makes you wonder. Let me tell you how batteries work. So every element or molecule has a different opinion about electric charges. Some of them like more negative stuff and some of them more positive stuff. Not that they actually take charges from the environment, because everything naturally likes to stay neutral and doesn't want excess charges. But they eye their favorite charges from afar, like... Hey you negative electron mama, I see you're standing in your corner of your host atom, unappreciated. Yeah I know I have a bunch of electrons, which I equally love, but I want to make you mine. How about you come a little bit closer? This is the reason why when we rub PVC to fabric for example, PVC steals electrons from the fabric and because they are non-conductive, the charges get stuck in them and so we have electrostatic charge. Same thing likes to happen within conductors, except electrons are fluid in these and don't get stuck, so they remain neutral. But, because one of them likes electrons more than the other one, it makes a tiny difference at their junction. This is when we have thermoelectric effect, that happens when we join two different conductors at a single spot. If we measure voltage at the end of conductors, we have like microvolts between them, because some electrons move from one of them to the other. And as the temperature goes up, the voltage rises too, and that's what we use to measure temperature. Now imagine we have put two different conductors called electrodes in a conductive liquid like salt water called electrolyte that has positive and negative ions. The electrodes are eyeballing their beloved charges, not doing anything but just watching. This tension between material creates a potential for energy between terminals. Then suddenly you close the circuit. The negative electrode says Damn you negative mama, I need you closer to feel your juicy electron. The negative ion can now come close to the electrode and repel the electron in the electrode and release its electron into it and become neutral. Ah huh? yes. Dang babe, since when you became so neutral? I think we should see other atoms. The neutral atoms form their own molecules and leave the scene. But that repelled electron is in the other electrode now which attracts the positive ions. 
Oi! Anyone wants an extra electron? Me, me! Boop! And the positive ion becomes neutral and goes away too. And this cycle continues until all ions in the electrolyte disappear. And that's the basic structure of a battery. There is a potential energy in a battery between electrodes and electrolytes that can dissipate in a circuit. In non-rechargeable batteries, the chemistry change in the battery is not reversible and you have to throw them in the recycling bin. But in rechargeable batteries, passing current backwards through the battery restores its chemistry. So I guess an iron rod inside a copper pipe filled with vinegar or lemon juice is a battery. Fine, I admit it, this vessel was a battery made 2000 years ago. But it was an accidental battery. Back then nobody knew it was a battery. See if you read the voltage between the terminals, you read like 0.4 volts. There is a table showing the different potential of different material. You see the potential difference between iron and copper is around 0.4 volts. But for example, the zinc carbon batteries we make are around 1.5 volts. Let's see how much current it can generate when shorted. Bam! Hey, it went up to like 0.2 milliamps and dropping quickly. Nothing too significant. This is absolutely unuseful for anything ancient 2000 years ago. Then you have this guy putting in series like 10 of these batteries, which are like 100 times larger than the original Baghdad battery. Putting them in series increases the total voltage to like 6.5 volts. That drops quickly when a 2 volt LED is connected to it because the LED barely turns on. And he concludes that generated energy is useful. We know as a matter of fact now that the Baghdad battery actually works. And what do mainstream experts say? They argue that even though it is a battery, such low voltage is not capable of doing anything useful. And this might seem like a good argument, but really it is a stupid argument. No. As if LED is an ancient technology. No. And some people claim they used it for electroplating, like coating another metal with gold using electricity. No. Yes, that battery generates electricity, but unless you put hundreds of these tiny garbage batteries in series and parallel to create enough energy, you can't do sh with them. What you must understand is that being able to understand you can put your circuits in series or parallel and that one increases the voltage and the other one increases current requires a whole higher level of electrical knowledge. They didn't even have the copper pipe exposed so they could connect it anywhere. It can't be a battery if it is missing a terminal and they didn't even know electricity runs through metals. So far all ancient people had seen was that rubbing wool or cotton on their body or whatever generates electricity. If it was me, I would think non-conductors are the best way to generate electricity and transfer it, not metals. And even if they had seen the effect of electricity generated by a Baghdad battery, they would have thought of it as a chemical reaction. Although all chemical reactions are also electrical trades between atoms. They didn't know this! So it was impossible for the ancient people to know they made a battery. Although they indeed made a battery, but the energy of a single cell was so small to be noticed as anything usable. They may have made a battery, but they didn't invent the battery. For example, if I'm trying new tea recipes and accidentally make a mixture that tastes like booger, but it's the cure to cancer and the world's hunger, if I don't know what it does, it's not an invention. I would throw it into garbage because of its shitty taste. Now you might ask, if it wasn't a battery, what was it for? I'm 100% sure I don't know what it was for. But my guess is, you know when you leave your low quality spoon in yogurt for too long and the yogurt starts tasting metallic? It's because of some similar chemical reactions. So maybe they put wine in it and the reaction enhanced the taste of wine? Or maybe they thought leaving vinegar or juice in copper and iron added healing powers to it if you drink it. I don't know. Now don't let Iron Man's wife know about this. Soon she'll be selling Baghdad battery juice that enhances your sexuality. Instead, go to Skillshare, use the link in the description and start exploring your interests and enhance your skills. You will find all sorts of classes from art to programming to crafts, from beginner to master level to learn from for less than $10 a month after the first two months of free trial. The beauty of Skillshare is in the diversity of their material, a community sharing their knowledge and the convenience of learning anywhere, anytime. I don't just do electronics, you know, I edit my videos myself and I have a horrible time animating stuff for my videos. 
So I'm thinking watching a tutorial by Fraser Davidson on After Effects animation could really push me over the curve. You may find it super useful too. So go to Skillshare and start learning. Thank you.